Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and I'm here to review Q-Force, and this is a new animated series from Netflix that focuses on a group of LGBTQ plus community members who are a bunch of super spies and they join a team because they don't really fit in with the, you know, the rough and tough world of espionage as, you know, constructed in this world. And this is basically how I describe on Netflix, Big Gay Archer. And it's really trying to lean into those elements and being very representative, which is very admirable and enjoyable in that way. It's very raunchy adult animated series, you know, in the vein of a lot of series that came before it. You have this ragtag crew of gay men and lesbians and transgender folk and it's a and also a really insecure and a really insecure and overly masculine spy played by David Harbour and you have this group and how they have their conflicts and how they bounce off of each other it's very they conflict against like traditional expectations of what spies are and it plays into that it really leans into those expectations and subverts them but in terms of like the actual series, like a lot of the humor is very hit or miss. It's like really swinging wild for it, and like some of it's like fabulous and fun and ridiculous, and some of it's just like cringe worthy on the nose. And you have this crew of you know Gary Cole is the like uh, uptight leader of like the traditional kind of spies, who's great always. David Harbour, as I mentioned before, he's having a lot of fun with this. John Hayes is our lead, who is this flamboyantly gay man who's dealing with being a spy, trying to balance a relationship with a man who's very loving to him. And you also have a stacked cast of supporting characters from the likes of Laurie Metcalf and Wanda Sykes and... Uh, Nicey Nash and Stephanie Beatrice, Sam Richardson of uh, Fortune Feimster, and just a whole group of really talented people who unfortunately just play this just a whole bunch of rolling stereotypes out there that it's just kind of like, I wish there was more to these characters, but basically they just lean heavily into these stereotypical characters, caricatures that they're trying to play. And honestly, this show is a bit of a letdown. It was an easy watch, 10 episodes, like 26-minute episodes. But it's watchable, but it's going to leave you wanting more. And I wanted a lot more out of this, which left me pretty disappointed. But those are my thoughts on the first season of Q-Force. Let me know what you think, and let's talk some movies and television. But thank you, as always, for tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.